have called as the dark, darkest night into your glorious light, that we may sing the wonders of the risen Christ. May our every breath retell the grace that broke into our strife, with boundless love and deepest joy within. Welcome to church today. Thank you for joining us for our service. Yes, thank you. And this morning uh, we have the pleasure of uh, welcoming Philip and Rosemary Halliday who will be sharing something uh, about the work that they are doing with the Baptist Missionary Society in France. And also uh, Philip will be sharing a short message with us uh, later on in the service. Um, before we come to our time of worship, I would like to share a verse of scripture which kind of ties in with the scripture that was shown at the beginning of our service there, which continues this theme of doors opening and doors being closed. In this particular scripture, which is further on in the chapter of Revelation, third chapter of Revelation, Jesus is uh, pictured as standing at the door and he says these words, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Whoever opens the door, I will come in and eat with them and they with me. There is this inviting, this image of inviting Christ into our lives, every aspect of our lives, including our worship this morning. And so we have that in mind as we come to our first song of worship today. Welcome, King of Kings.
for leading us in our time of worship this morning. We are about to hear from Trudy as she reads our scripture for today and then we will hear from Philip and Rosemary. Before we do so, let us pray. Almighty God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, three in one and yet one in three, as your people gather together in your name today, may our hearts and minds be open to you as we seek to grow in our understanding of who you are and of the depth of your love for us. Lord, we have lifted up our songs of praise to you as an act of worship and ask that you would continue to teach us through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. As we read your word and spend time in prayer, how to live every part of our lives in worship of you. Lord, Please help us to be continually aware of your presence with us and to learn to be obedient to your will for us as a community and as individuals. We pray, Lord, that as your kingdom is established in every part of our lives, that you would help us to stand firm in the face of all the challenges that life may bring each of us, so that we may honour and glorify you through the way we live in the world and with one another. Lord, we thank you that you have opened a door for us, that no one can close, and that we can experience the freedom you have given us through the forgiveness of our sins. We ask that as we come now to hear from your word, that you would make our ears and hearts attentive to your voice and to notice what you want us to hear and learn today. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's reading is from John, chapter 10, verses 1 to 10. Very truly I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. 
When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him, because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him, because they do not recognise a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate, whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief only comes to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Hello, we are Philip and Rosemary Halliday. We are working with BMS World Mission in France, where we've been for almost 30 years, and we're really glad to be able to connect with you in this way. I have a drawer in this study full of keys, which open so many different doors. I have keys to this flat, of course. I have keys to my colleague's flat, Christine Kling. I have keys to a nearby church building in gives sur yvette I have keys to two different church buildings in Brittany. So many keys, so many doors. I'm imagining it's a similar story in your place. These are the doors of our life as it was before. Before we closed our doors against the spread of the coronavirus during these lockdown weeks. A door features at the beginning of John chapter 10. A dozen or so verses that are rich in imagery and metaphor and biblical references. It all starts with the story of shepherds and a gatekeeper, robbers and thieves who would like to get their hands on the sheep as they move around. I think in fact during these past weeks we were probably a little jealous of these lucky sheep who are able to go in and out quite freely. One of the marks of the shepherd is that he goes into the sheepfold by the door the image here is probably of a stone structure that was set up in the fields and acted as a pen for the sheep, for several different flocks of sheep, in fact. The shepherd goes in by the door, whereas the false shepherds, that's to say the thieves and robbers, try to get over the walls. The imagery of sheep and a shepherd is quite familiar to Jesus, of course, and it's something that appeared quite a bit in the history of Israel. It's imagery which speaks of care and concern, but also of ownership and authority and rule. We have to wonder how the Pharisees missed the open, direct criticism that Jesus was levelling at them here in John chapter 10. Jesus was reminding them that they'd been called to be shepherds, but that they were now more like thieves, strangers even, who had very little concern for the people. They don't even know you anymore, says Jesus. You see, the shepherd, each shepherd would come to the common pen and call out by name his own sheep. But we read here the Pharisees did not understand what Jesus was telling them. In the Gospel of John, there are no little commentaries on the parables to help us understand them as there are in the other Gospels. So Jesus continues without saying any more about the identity of the thieves or the robbers or the sheep or the shepherd. But he does go on to give us the key to his message with one of his I am statements that punctuate John's gospel. The imagery evolves and develops as Jesus says, I am the door. This door he's talking about is, of course, the one that opens onto life, life in all its abundance. Thieves and robbers, well, they come to steal and kill and destroy, but Jesus comes to give life. He is the door of grace that opens onto the kingdom of God, shalom life, fullness of life. Jesus is the unique, the unique and absolute way to salvation. Life in all its abundance. If you were to ask your neighbours about that, they would probably think in material terms and talk about an abundance of money and stuff. But Jesus is not referring to that. We, we know that. The life of abundance he's talking about is the rich life of new hope, life for eternity, but also the fullness of life here and now. 
This abundant life that Jesus offers is expressed in all places and in all circumstances, even in the smallest spaces and the most difficult moments. In the room of the COVID-19 patient who's beginning to breathe more easily again. In the gaze of an elderly person who's just seen relatives at the window after a long time without visitors. In the joy of the Spanish and Italian children who are rediscovering the pleasure of being able to play outside again. Ordinary moments of life but which take on a rather special meaning in these circumstances because of the danger that is around us. Talking about life in its fullness through Jesus is not a denial of the real and ongoing dangers from the thieves and robbers. This abundant life, however, persists and thrives even in the valley of the shadow of death, to quote that well-known verse from Psalm 23. And Jesus is the door that leads to this life of abundance. In Jesus' day, there was sometimes no door to the sheep enclosure, but simply an opening in the stone wall. At night, the shepherd would sometimes lie down in this opening and thus become a, a sort of human door, offering protection from the wild animals, literally offering his body for the flock as he watches over their coming and going, to quote Psalm 121. Jesus, the door. Jesus, the good shepherd. And as John chapter 10 will go on to tell us, Jesus the Lamb that was sacrificed in order that we might have life in all its fullness. The questions around abundant life are ones that I reckon we're going to be asking in the weeks and months ahead. This invisible coronavirus danger has surely reminded humanity of its vulnerability and also of what a gift life is, this life that is accompanied also by death. Had not our civilization neglected it a little? Didn't we sometimes forget to take care of it? Didn't we sometimes take it for granted, forgetting that we needed to cherish it and invest in it? Were we not tempted by thieves and robbers, by those with easy and superficial promises, but that in fact lead to destruction? Tempted to follow unknown paths that maybe are easy to begin with, but then on which we get lost? Tempted to wander off like a sheep far away from the others, far away from the shepherd that gets itself into trouble. Let's hope that we'll soon be able to open our doors wide again. In some cases that may involve having to find keys. We might have to find our car keys or our office keys. We'll venture out into a world that is a little different from the one we left behind. It would be such a shame if the only changes to result from this pandemic crisis were superficial ones, only material changes that are important, but are not the most important. It would be such a tragedy if we were to forget the most important door key, the key that opens onto the kingdom of God, the Lord Jesus. What do the sheep in John chapter 10 have to teach us about the before and after of lockdown? about abundant life. Well, amid the hubbub of voices and all the information that we're being bombarded with and which will continue, we will have to be discerning and wise. We will really need to tune into the voice of the Good Shepherd who calls for humility, who calls for love of neighbour. As we re-engage with a world that was far from perfect, it will be important to resist the temptations of the thieves and the robbers. They have all kinds of names, these thieves and robbers, such as overconsumption, the exploitation of the planet, unrestrained materialism, to name but a few. Within the imagery of the shepherd and the sheep, I think we have a picture of nature being respected. I think we've all enjoyed seeing the positive impact of lockdown on nature which in some areas has begun to look a little bit more like life in all its abundance. Will we be able to preserve this? In our rediscovered freedom, we would do well to think collectively and less individually, like those sheep who stick together, because the future of humanity will depend on it. If we needed reminding, this pandemic crisis has certainly underlined our interdependence. At the same time, we'll need to preserve our freedoms too, 
It will be important to push back the temptation of locked doors and for some the anxiety and stress of reconnecting with the outside world again. I like the image of the sheep coming out of the enclosure to go and graze in rich pasture. They're free to come and go because they live in the trust of the shepherd. And this gives them confidence and peace and keeps them from being afraid. Over the next weeks and months, we'll be faced with such questions in this very particular context of the COVID-19 pandemic and its consequences. There will be the temptation to lock borders and to lock doors. This temptation will be strong. The fear of death will persist and could overwhelm us. We will hear a thousand stuck to voices in our ears, promising versions of security that have nothing to do with abundant life in Jesus. In these uncertain times, more than ever, let's remain attentive to the voice of the Good Shepherd, to his protection, to the perspective that he gives us, to the door that opens onto a life of fullness in the shalom of his presence, with the confidence and peace that God gives us every day. France is very much in need of the good news that Jesus is the door that opens onto life, life in all its abundance. The church in France carries and embodies this message of hope. Rosemary's and my role among the French Baptists is to give a national lead on church planting and on revitalising congregations that have for whatever reason become quite small. Over the past year, it's been a joy to see existing church plants around France growing and developing, and also to see some new work begin. The newest church plant to be added is in Rennes, in the capital of Brittany. There's a small international team there made up of an American, a Canadian, a German, and a French person. The church plant is multicultural too, currently bringing together about 10 adults and 10 children. As well as discipleship groups in the week, there's an English club, there's a discussion group in a local cafe, and the leadership team are all members of different clubs and societies in the town. They meet their local community at the school gate, in the local parks, over a meal in their apartments, wherever they can, praying that God will use them to make disciples and to build his church in rain. Do pray for this young team. In addition to our national role, Phillips and my time is divided between doing church planting ourselves locally in Jeff Surivet and helping to revitalise two older congregations on the North Brittany coast in Morley and Roscoff. Close to where we live, we work with our BMS colleague Christine Kling in a church plant. We have a gathering for worship each weekend, either on the Sunday morning or on the Saturday evening. And there are also midweek contact groups. Connections are made through neighbours, local clubs and so on. We sometimes organise bigger events such as at Christmas time and that helps us to communicate more widely in the town. But most of our activities are smaller scale with a lot of sharing of food and developing of friendships. The church plant at Gilles sur yvette is progressing bit by bit and there are some encouragements. But as is usual in France, it will probably take time and require perseverance. For one week each month, we travel to the North Brittany coast and live there, working with two small congregations in Morley and Roscoff, aiming to help them to develop and grow. This revitalising work has been going well, as we have aimed to build up the believers and to help them reach out to their communities. As well as a lot of small group work, we have arranged for different colleagues to come to Brittany for a weekend, to take the services and to lead a seminar. We have also put on a series of public events to allow the church to communicate more widely in the town. We're happy to report that the congregation is growing steadily. A big part of our life this past year has been the presence of a BMS action team. Hamish, Bridget, Ruth and Jenny work with us both locally in Gilles sur Yvette and also in Brittany. They serve the churches in a range of ways, including providing the music for the Sunday worship, running an English club, painting and decorating our buildings, and doing some gardening. But their main contribution was, in the words of more than one church member, that they brought us their youth and their freshness. Like you, no doubt, 
We are uncertain about what our life will look like in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. Since the 14th of March, we have moved all our activities online, both locally and in Brittany. Given the size of the churches we work with, it has been possible to continue to meet through Zoom. And we also make ample use of WhatsApp and our phones, of course. We've actually had a couple of new people join us since we went online, and we have launched some new activities, such as a weekly aperitif and a cine club. Right now, we don't know how long this situation will continue for, and we don't really know what church will look like afterwards. All we can ask for you and for ourselves is that God will inspire us and lead us and use us so that other people will discover that Jesus is indeed the door that opens onto life. Life in all its abundance, the rich life of new hope, shalom life, life in all its fullness. As we sign off, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for your friendship, for your interest in us and all that we're doing here in France and for your support for us as we work with BMS World Mission. Well, thank you, Philip and Rosemary, for sharing something of the work that is going on uh, through the Baptist Missionary Society in France. And thank you um, for sharing that word with us this morning, Philip. Uh, very thought provoking and something to reflect on in the week ahead. Uh, also, um, I'd like to share now a song that was forwarded by uh, Philip, which is a collaboration, a song, a collaboration between uh, people from different churches. And uh, this song is in French with uh, subtitles, uh, so you should be able to follow along. And uh, it, it has that um, refrain in it, I will follow Jesus. And it's just a beautiful song and we'd like to share that with you just now. Quand le soleil minot sur les monts ta présence abonde. Oh. Jésus, je te suivrai dans la paix de ton mon âme dans la vallée du deuil et de l'ombre. Oh, oh, oh.
Thank you for sharing that lovely song with us, Philip. We'll now come into a time of prayer, which will be led by Jean, Sam and Kathleen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another Sunday and a chance to come together through the means of modern technology to praise and worship you and to hear from our dear friends, Philip and Rosemary. Thank you for our long-standing friendship with them and for how much they mean to us here at Kings Park Baptist Church. Thank you for the great work they do in France and for the blessing they are to so many people. Thank you for the ways they have been able to adapt through this lockdown and found new ways to spread the gospel. We thank you that they have a bit more freedom and have been able to go to the nearby park with their flask of coffee. Please, Father, will you continue to keep them and their family virus-free and safe in these trying times, thinking especially of elderly parents who are, a, who are a long way away. Thank you for what they shared with us today. May you continue to bless them and use them for your glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. The following are lyrics from a popular song, Lord make us instruments of your peace. It contains powerful words and prayers that I believe are quite appropriate for these times. Please pray with me. Lord make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let your love increase. Lord make us instruments of your peace. Walls of pride and prejudice shall cease when we are your instruments of peace. Where there is hatred, we will show you your love. Where there is injury, we will never judge. Where there is striving, we will speak your peace. To the millions crying for release, we will be your instruments of peace. 
Where there is blindness, we will pray for sight. Where there is darkness, we will shine your light. Where there is sadness, we will bear their grief. To the millions crying for relief, we will be your instruments of peace. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let your love increase. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Walls of pride and prejudice shall cease when we are your instruments of peace. Our Father, you have made a beautiful world. The natural world is complex, marvellous and finely balanced. All life exists in a kind of harmony, each relying on the other. We're aware too of the complexity in our human interactions and how we depend on each other. This is highlighted just now even more when things are so different from normal. But human lives are broken in so many ways. By violence, by wars, poverty, people forced to flee from home as refugees, We're broken by the COVID global pandemic, broken by fear and hatred of each other due to racism. The Lord Jesus, you came to bring us hope and show us a better way. You are the way to the Father, the Creator. Thank you that you are our shepherd and that as we follow where you lead, you mend what is broken in us. As our shepherd, you lead us by still waters and refresh our souls. You bring to us life in all its fullness, along with abundant hope. Thank you, Jesus, that you are aware of the brokenness in and around us. You came to earth in humility and to be broken yourself to bring your healing, life and light. One day you will return in glory. As we grieve for our world and the people around us, there is hope. You can fix the brokenness. We ask for your mercy to be poured out in this world where so much is wrong. We ask for your healing to flow, for your people to be refreshed and revived to bring life and death, healing in the brokenness and light and darkness. Please be with the world leaders as they make decisions that affect the natural world and human affairs. We pray for wise leaders who will fulfil your purposes. Refresh and revive your people, Lord, and lead us in all aspects of our lives so that we can make your name known in this broken world. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join us now as we sing our next song of worship, Christ is mine forevermore. But mine is 
beside the king I walk, for there my heart has found its treasure, Christ is mine forevermore. Come rejoice now, O my soul, for his love is my reward. Fear is gone and hope is sure, Christ is mine. Beside the king I walk, for there my heart has found its treasure. Christ is mine forevermore. Christ is mine forevermore. As we come to the end of our service today, I would just like to thank you for joining us. And thank you to all those who contributed this morning. Yes, and as we close uh, now, I'd like to share a song that is uh, uh, that's very familiar to many of us. And, and uh, I want to say it's very special to me and Trudy. That's why uh, we've chosen it this week. Um, this week we celebrate 30 years of marriage. Yes, we managed to survive <laughs> all of those uh, years together. And uh, I think just every even, year... Even lockdown. <laughs> yeah. In lockdown, we've managed to survive 30 years of marriage or our 30th year of marriage. Uh, but this song was uh, our wedding song and it means so much to us because we weren't even Christians then. Uh, but since we've uh, come to faith, we've sang this song so many times and it just reminds us of God's grace and mercy uh, and how he brought us together. And so as we go out and as we think about... Uh, our wedding anniversary this week we'd like to share this song with you it's amazing grace Thank you.
chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy released, unending love. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love. Shall soon.